Now ain't this a surprise? I tell you what, Shasta, I love playing Skyrim. What you want? far away from that game now. It's pretty bright out today. I put the... folks remember back in 2017 when I reviewed Fugitive Hunter? I hate this game! I hate this game! I hate this game! I yeah, I remember too. Nothing has really changed since then. It's still the worst video game I've ever played and reviewed thus far. Now, for the past three years, I've been trying to avoid anything that had Black Ops Entertainment stamp on it was delaying the inevitable, though. I knew eventually I would have to bring up one of their games again. So, since it's been so long, since the Fugitive Hunter review, I've decided to review not one, not two, but four Black Ops titles. Two that are good, and two that are bad. And, since customs dictate that I discuss the bad news first, let's review... Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. <laughs> nah, I'm fine, buddy. The only game, in my opinion, that was worth that kind of anger was Fugitive Hunter. And I'll be damned if I ever talk about it again. Anyway, time for some history. I couldn't find a ton of info on this title, but I was able to scrounge this up. In 2002, Atari, the publishers behind Rise of the Machines, had purchased the license of the movie Terminator 3. Upon acquiring that license, they set about to produce three games. Two of them would be handled by another group of devs called Paradigm Entertainment, whilst Rise of the Machines was given off to Black Ops to design. Black Ops might have been the chief developers, but they weren't the only ones working on this. Yeah, as it turns out, three other dev teams also had a hand in making this. Legend Entertainment worked on the weapon models and their effects, Melbourne House worked on the sound design, and Shiny, yup, the Earthworm Jim guys, helped with the one-on-one -on -one fighting segments. Rise of the Machines would be released on November 11th, 2003 for the PS2 and the original Xbox. 
Black Ops was working on a GameCube version, but had to cancel it due to a deficient amount of time to make it. It didn't take long for this game to be critically panned soon after it was released, either. Every game news outlet from EGM to OXM slammed this title, and many of them agreed that it felt rushed. I'm starting to connect the dots here. I checked, and both this game and Fugitive Hunter were released the same year, the same month, and with literally a week between each other. I'm fucking serious, folks. You can't make this shit up. I'll be honest, though. I have no history with T3 Rides in the Machines, so for all I know, it might be okay. Let's, uh, let's put it in and take a look. Okay. Well, I can at least talk about a couple of the good things before I completely eviscerate this title. One thing that sets Rise of the Machines apart from Fugitive Hunter is that this is actually a challenging title. I've died a few times playing this and it never came off as cheap. That was something I neglected to mention in my review of Fugitive Hunter. That game was so goddamn easy it wasn't even funny. Granted, Rise of the Machines isn't super difficult, but it can keep you on your toes. Health pickups are kind of abundant, however, you can quite easily lose health due to the fact that you're fighting, mostly, against futuristic machines armed with futuristic guns. There's also a somewhat ample amount of ammo pickups, too, but you'll want to be switching between weapons often because all of their rates of fire are hella fast. Well, that's a great thing right there. The game legitimately tests you, and it makes you think. I commend that. While we're on the subject of guns, uh, the ones in Rise of the Machines are pretty damn fun to use. You do get some modern weapons like a Remington shotgun and an HK MP5, but you also get guns from the future. And yes, even the phased plasma rifle in a 40 watt range is in this game. That's yet another thing that Rise of the Machines has over Fugitive Hunter. The weapons are slightly fun to use. There is a bit of a problem when it comes to fighting the enemies, but more on that later. I suppose it does work out when you have a completely different team of devs helping to work on one of the game's major aspects. As I mentioned previously, don't get too attached to one single gun because they all have a very high rate of fire and most of the enemies are robots, so they can take quite a beating. And that is the last nice thing I have to say about Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines. Now let's see why it ain't worth shit. The story takes place kinda sorta before the events of the third film, but don't worry because this game isn't canon, and thank god for that because the narrative is disjointed as all hell. Let me give y'all a short rundown. The Resistance has captured a T-850 and have reprogrammed it to go back in time and protect John Connor as well as his future wife Kate Brewster. Before going back in time, the T-850, along with the Resistance, infiltrates one of Skynet's control centers. After that, the T-850 is sent back to the past, finds John and Kate, fights the TX a little bit, and then the game decides to go back to the future, where we get even more backstory, this time taking place before the T-850 was captured and reprogrammed. You go through that segment for a while until the game decides to drop back in time, where now it seems to follow the movie. In fact, the ending is pretty much a CG frame-for-frame -frame copy of the film's ending. You see what I mean by how the story is all jumbled up? It's as if the devs didn't know whether they wanted to write the game as a prequel or as faithful to the movie, so they just went with both. The visuals of Rise of the Machines are very below average. I will say this, the graphics here are better than the graphics in Fugitive Hunter, but only by a small margin. These visuals do look like they come from a PS2 game, but they also look like they came from an early PS2 title. And by early, I mean like launch title early. But that's the issue. Rise of the Machines was released in 2003. That was the same year Mace Griffin Bounty Hunter came out, and it looked better. Also, that game was actually fun. 
The biggest gripe I have with Rise of the Machines graphics, though, is that they're too shit-ass dark. How does Black Ops expect anyone to play this when you can barely fucking see anything? Oh, and here's the kicker, there is no way to adjust the game's brightness. That means you'll have to adjust the settings on your TV to actually have some clarity. I've never mentioned this before, but that's actually one of my gaming pet peeves. Fumbling around like a chicken with its head cut off because everything's just too damn dark. While we're still on the subject of visuals, the CG cutscenes look hideous. Just look at this crap. I mean, they're not the worst CG cutscenes I've ever seen in a video game, but Christ, look at how amateurish they look. The animation looks like it was done by a first-year college student. If that were the case, I wouldn't even bring it up. Y'all can't tell me that Atari didn't have enough money to give to Black Ops to make the animation look better. Another problem with these cutscenes is that they're intermixed with live-action FMV scenes from the film. I'm not even sure if I should show much of this considering YouTube's policies with this kind of stuff. But anyway, going back to the narrative a little, the fact that these FMV scenes are here along with the CG stuff just makes what's already a confusing narrative even more confusing. <laughs> Let me ask you folks something. What is one of the most important aspects of any game? That's right, being able to play it. And when the devs can't get a control scheme right, then they pretty much fuck the experience. I played good titles that had somewhat awkward controls, like Dead Rising 1. But for Rise of the Machines, I almost can't adjust to its wonkiness. Firstly, there are sensitivity problems when it comes to looking around. There's not an ounce of a comfortable in-between. The T850 either turns or looks around too fast or too slow. The devs obviously knew this was troublesome because they actually put a lock-on feature in for aiming. Another issue with the controls are the weird button placements. Primary and secondary fires R2 and R1, which is usual, but what isn't is the jump button, which is L2. Why couldn't it have been the X button? That would have made more sense. Instead, X is the interaction button. Switching between weapons is also a pain in the ass. In any ordinary console FPS game, up and down on the D-pad switches weapons. But not in Rise of the Machines, it's left and right instead. Y'all want to know what up and down really does? It zooms the T850's vision in and out. I would call that an unneeded feature. I've beaten this game all the way through and I never had to use the zoom function. Another unneeded feature that the devs put in is the Termo Vision. I get what Black Ops was trying to do with this, it's a callback to the movies, but seriously, I only used it once. Y you know, that's lame. The Termo Vision is a feature that probably could have been useful. I am able to somewhat adapt to this game's crooked controls, but only about this much. Anyway, let's move on to the enemies you'll have to face. Since this is a Terminator title, you'll mostly be facing off against droids, but you'll also be fighting humans from time to time. In the end, it doesn't matter who you're battling with because the enemy AI is stupid as shit. Bad guys only know how to walk towards and shoot at you, damn whatever is in their way. Okay, ten years before Rise of the Machines came out, this kind of enemy AI would have worked. There were plenty of games that were still using the Wolfenstein 3D engine at that time. Another thing that makes the enemies comparable to those in a title that used the Wolf 3D engine is the amount of enemies. Like I said, the game is challenging compared to Fugitive Hunter, where in that, the bad guys were pretty much brain dead, but still, putting more enemies on screen is such an early 90s way of making the game more challenging. Oh, God! Sorry to bring up the graphics again, but just look at this character model. That's just downright ugly. 
And it's not just this particular NPC either. All the character models look fucking ghastly and disgusting. Nowhere near as cool as how their concept art looks. You know you're dealing with a bad title when the concept art looks better than the finished asset. They weren't thinking, Shasta. They just saw dollar signs. <laughs> you folks want to know what's really funny, though? Like in Fugitive Hunter, Rise of the Machines has these one-on-one -on -one fighting segments in it. Well, now I'm convinced that somebody at Black Ops wanted to make a fighting game. I mean, pfft, why else would this title have fighting parts like its sibling? Uh, granted, these fighting bits aren't as bad as those found in Fugitive Hunter. That's partially because there's not that many here, but they're still bad. You don't have to button mash like you would have for Fugitive Hunter. Instead, all you gotta do is spam the fuck out of the circle button, which is grapple. You'll still take damage, but you're pretty much guaranteed to win 90% of the time. Another thing that sucks about these fighting segments is that you pretty much only fight the TX. You do get to battle against another T850, but it's the only other opponent you'll fight. I'm grateful that the devs didn't put that many of these segments in Rise of the Machines, but the fact that they're here slightly pisses me off. Also, how could Shiny, of all teams, be suckered into designing these? For as bad as Rise of the Machines is, it's very short, but I don't mean that in a good way. If y'all thought that this was going to be a longer FPS like Red Faction or Goldeneye, it's not. I didn't time it exactly, but I finished this game in just a little over three and a half hours. Under usual circumstances, I would count the short length as a positive for this title. Thing is, Rise of the Machines was heavily advertised and published by Atari. When the game was released, it was 50 bucks out the door. That means folks who bought this day one were legit ripped off. Many reviewers have said this before me, but it bears to be repeated. When your average gamer buys a title, they typically want to play it for a while. There are definitely a lot of exceptions, but ordinarily, a game's playtime should be on the longer side. Especially if you just drop $50 on it. The brief duration of Rise of the Machines has made me believe that no one at Black Ops or Atari had any imagination. That opinion of mine is enforced by the fact that they actually got THE Arnold Schwarzenegger and a few other actors from the film to voice characters in this game. I'm dead serious. Arnold voices the T-850, Nick Stahl voices John, hell, even Kristana Locken and Claire Danes voice their respective roles from the movie. As far as I'm concerned, these poor actors wasted their time and talent. The guys at both Black Ops and Atari had the license and they had the assets. They should have been using their heads to put together, at the very least, a half-assed decent title. Okay, I think I've played this game enough. In all honesty, Rise of the Machines isn't as bad as Fugitive Hunter. But that's not hard to do, and that wasn't a compliment. It's still a shitty game. I can't in good consciousness recommend Rise of the Machines to anybody. Not even hardcore Terminator fans. This title is basically the more functional and less idiotic brother of Fugitive Hunter. I know I've mentioned that game quite a bit throughout this review, but what the fuck else could I compare Rise of the Machines to? It was made by the same team and developed and released at relatively the same time. If you ask me, Black Ops should have just cancelled Fugitive Hunter and focused their attention on this title. I say that because Rise of the Machines had more key value, and possibly had the devs focused on one project instead of two, this would have come out okay. Maybe. I've had mostly bad luck with movie-based games, so for all I know, this was probably destined to be bad. I'm going to give Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines an H for horrendous. 
it's pretty much just a licensed hack job made by people who really didn't give a shit about the franchise they were dealing with. Folks, that's one game down and three to go, and I'm already starting to regret doing this marathon. I'll see you viewers next time when we dig a little deeper into Black Ops as a company and review the very last game they made. <laughs>